This is an ABC podcast. Hello, it's Norman Swan here. This isn't the health report, but I did want to share with you a new Radio National program that I think you might enjoy. It's called Sporty, hosted by Amanda Smith, and it's your guide to the powerful place sport and fitness hold in Australia's cultural life and in our health. Here's a snippet from Sporty about giving your heart some love and attention. Benjamin Levine is a cardiologist, and for more than 20 years, he's been running studies on the effect of exercise on your heart. Dr. Levine is based in Dallas, Texas. On a visit to Australia at the Baker Heart and Diabetes Institute, Amanda Smith met up with him for a heart-to-heart. Probably the best place to start is with the most famous study in our field, which the Dallas Bed Rest and Training Study was done in the 1960s, and some of the most famous physiologists and cardiologists on the planet were involved in this study. Yes, so tell us briefly what that involved. So they took five young men and they put them to bed for three weeks and then they trained them for two months and they demonstrated this extraordinary plasticity of the heart and circulation. Now, I was only 10 years old in 1966, so I had nothing to do with that study. But in 1996, 30 years later, we found those same guys, brought them back to Dallas and studied them again. And the striking finding was that not a single person not one, after 30 years of aging, was in worse shape than they were after three weeks of bed rest when they were in their 20s. So what does that say? So three weeks of bed rest deconditioning was worse for the human body's ability to do physical work than 30 years of aging. And it made us start to speculate, well, how much of what we typically associate or attribute to aging is really just deconditioning? Uh, People say, oh, you know, I'm just getting old, I'm a little tired. And, well, maybe some of that's true, but maybe some of it's deconditioning. So we next said, okay, let's take people who have conditioned their whole lives, a group of masters athletes, uh, marathon runners, high-level exercisers, and let's study them. And one of the things in my lab is that I put heart catheters in, and we measure the compliance of the heart as an index of its youthfulness. Oh, what does that mean? (laughs) Well, let me give you an analogy. Let's say you take a a box of fresh rubber bands. You take one out and you stretch it and it snaps back and it's nice and flexible and it stretches a long way. You don't have to pull really hard. Put that box of rubber bands in your junk drawer for 30 years and then take it out again. And now you stretch it and it's kind of dry and stiff and it doesn't stretch. That's exactly what happens to the elastic elements and to the structure of your heart and blood vessels. It gets stiff, it shrinks, atrophies, and stiffens. So the cardinal sign from our perspective of sedentary aging is a shrinking and stiffening of the heart and blood vessels. So we selected a group of top elite endurance athletes, masters athletes, and we measured their heart structure and function. And then we recruit a group of extremely healthy but sedentary seniors, average age of 70. Now this is a much more recent study. Yeah, oh yes, oh absolutely. These series of studies were done between 2010 and 2019, so the last decade or so of our research program. And what we saw was that um, we took these really healthy sedentary individuals, no medical problems, on no medications, just sedentary aging. And we found that they had stiffer and less flexible hearts than the master's athletes who were indistinguishable from healthy 30-year-olds. That's quite, quite extraordinary but not a very good public health measure, right? Because I can't really expect the entire population to be as active and as fit as a competitive master's marathon runner. So the next set of questions we asked were, well, how much exercise do you need to do over a lifetime to preserve this youthfulness of the circulation? And so we turned to our colleagues at the Cooper Clinic. Ken Cooper is the guy who wrote the book Aerobics, and so he's a very famous preventive physician in Dallas. And he started the longitudinal study where they tracked 80, I think it's now up to 100,000 people over 40 years and tracked a variety of different things, including their physical activity. 
And so he said, okay, let's find people who did consistently over a 20-year period the same amount of exercise. Every time they came to the Cooper Clinic over 20 years, they said, yes, I did no regular exercise. A group of casual exercisers who did two or three days a week of regular exercise. A group of committed exercisers, four to five days a week. And then another group of competitive master's athletes, over 100 individuals who got heart catheterizations and comprehensive studies of their physiology. And although we have only selected based on frequency, right, not intensity. Not, not actually what you're doing, just yes. the amount of time you're doing it. Exactly. It was absolutely proportional to their fitness measurements. So it was a pretty good tool. It's hard to track anything other than frequency over a 20-year period. So what we found was that doing two or three days a week of regular exercise had no measurable effect on cardiac stiffness or vascular stiffness. They look just like sedentary uh, seniors. Four to five days a week got them most of the way there. They were not quite as good as the master's athletes, but still youthfully compliant and flexible. So we were very pleased about that. And then we said, okay, let's take our sedentary seniors and 70-year-olds, right, and train them. Train them for a year and see if we can reverse it. Yes, well, this is, of course, what I'm thinking all through this. Not only if you are going to take up exercise into middle age, can you uh, prevent this sort of stiffening around the heart, but can you also reverse it? Yeah, that's the key question, isn't it? Because what we've shown is that sedentary aging over a lifetime with the average age of 70 causes this very dramatically stiffening of the heart and blood vessels. So we took these 70-year-olds and we trained them for a year. And we couldn't touch it. Nothing happened. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. They, they got fitter, and they were stronger, and, and, and there's no doubt that there were some positive benefits, but we could not reverse the structural changes in the heart. Well, that, of course, prompts the question, up to what age is there an effect? Uh, so you've asked the million-dollar question. Um, well, let's say call it the $500,000 question, because the million-dollar question comes next. The half-million-dollar question is, well, when in the aging process does this start? And we did another more than 100 group of individuals, highly screened, just sedentary aging. And what we found is this stiffening process starts in late middle age. 50 to 64 is late middle age. And then it becomes consolidated as you get older. So we decided that that sweet spot is probably in late middle age. 50 to 64. And now we come to the study that was led by Aaron Howden, a former postdoctoral fellow of mine and now a staff member here at the Baker. And um, we took 60 healthy middle-aged men and women who were completely sedentary and we randomly assigned them to either a two-year exercise program or two years of balance and flexibility control. Because I mean, two years of study plus two heart catheterizations, you need to give people in the control group something to, something to do. And something to benefit them, yeah. right? So, so that we have clinical equipoise is the medical term. So it's good for the control group as well. And we trained them for two years. And what we found was quite striking that four to five days a week, including at least one high intensity interval session and one long session, reversed the effects of sedentary aging on the heart and blood vessels in that late middle age range. And uh, the control group, although they felt good, didn't get any fitter and their hearts didn't change at all. So it clearly was a direct function of the exercise training. So is that the million dollar question? Well, that is the million-dollar question. There's a $2 million question <laughs> also. And, and I say that because the scourge of aging in the Western world is heart failure. From a cardiovascular disease standpoint, the thing that drives so much of our financial burden of the elderly is heart failure because people aren't dying of heart disease as much. So they're surviving their diseases, but they're ending up with heart failure. And in the elderly, about half of those patients have what's called a preserved ejection fraction, meaning the heart looks for all the world like it's contracting normally, but it is small and stiff. 
And so as people try to exercise, the blood flowing in really has got nowhere to go. So it backs up into the lungs and people get short of breath. And in its worst format, I mean, they can't even make a bed or do housework or take a walk with their grandchildren. So this is serious business. And it turns out that billions of dollars have been spent trying to treat this condition, which is called HEF-PEF, heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction, with not a single success throughout the world. So it's an untreatable disease, perhaps the most common and expensive untreatable disease in the Western world. So the take-home message then, I guess, is even if you are not doing much, not very active, if you're under 65, get active. It's an antidote for what can happen to your heart as you age. Um, Yes, I think that exercise is a critical pill to take to prevent shrinking and stiffening of the heart and blood vessels. The trick is starting now. If you've waited until middle age, you can actually reverse that effect on the heart. Benjamin Levine is a distinguished professor of exercise sciences at the University of Texas Southwestern. And he was speaking with Amanda Smith, host of the new RN program, Sporty. You can subscribe to Sporty via the ABC Listen app, your favorite podcast platform, or find it on the ABC RN website. You've been listening to an ABC podcast. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.